Okay, welcome to another quick take video on tooling and different things that you can do on Solana. Today we'll be going over gaming and I am joined by Jonas who has done lots of different work on games on Solana. Uh, but yeah, let's start get started. Uh, first question that I have is like, what kind of game can you build on a blockchain or even on Solana? Uh, yeah, if you think about Solana like as some kind of um, database that everyone can use, you could basically think that you can almost build any game on it um, that comes out with a delay of like one or two seconds for your requests. So I saw already like uh, tons of games on chain, actually, like some adventures, city builder, casual games, a board game, uh, tons of coin flip games. And um, so basically all of these things uh, can be built on Solana also on chain. Um, what is a bit tricky maybe is if you have some uh, asymmetrical game like poker, where you don't want the other side of the game to know your cards. So, but I already saw some uh, ways how to fix it, and I'm going to share a little bit of that later. Cool. And then, like, would you, uh, you mentioned a bunch of different types of games. Would you build, like, a first-person shooter, or is that a good or a bad idea? Well, first-person shooter, I get uh, ping is a little bit too high. But if you think uh, maybe something like Worms or Tanks, that you could build, like, where you, like... Uh, point your cannon to something and then shoot and then you have enough time for the client to simulate the rocket that uh, would so certainly be possible i think okay yeah that makes perfect sense um and then like hey what does a developer need to start building a game on solana uh, I would say mostly uh, to start off you need some kind of a passion <laughs> i don't know um um and then you would probably start with um um, Anchor Playground, for example, where you have just where you can deploy your first game within two minutes. It's an online platform where you uh, can deploy and build your programs. And I did some examples for that. So you can just open the page, click the button, and then after two minutes, you have your first uh, little adventure game ready, basically. Awesome. And then, like, what uh, what SDKs or other go-to gaming resources are there out there today? Um, there is, for example, the Unity SDK, which is amazing. So it lets you um, directly connect to the blockchain from within your Unity game. You can sign transactions, you can get all your NFTs, you can pass the trades of the NFTs. So, um, yeah, that is uh, really helpful. And then there's also, like, I have a YouTube channel where I teach a few of these um, of these um, things in videos, like how you build a game, how you port it to Unity. And then there's also um, a lot of open source games, which I think is a great resource. You can just um, look at the source code and try to figure things out yourself. Cool. Uh, let's see some of these open source games and see how they use uh, Solana. Cool. So this is the Anchor Playground thing I was talking about earlier. Um, you can just open the page and then you can here start one of the tutorials. And then basically in a few seconds, you have your first uh, on-chain game deployed. Then this is the Unity channel um, where I do some videos where you can like easily get into it. Then uh, I would like to show you this uh, example game I was working on. So how it works is um, you pick an NFT and then you spawn this NFT on this map. And it's a multiplayer game. So there are currently two other players on this map. And I have this uh, auto approve wallet, which I can fill up with some saw to pay for transaction costs. And then I can just do uh, auto approve transactions in the client. So here you can see how quick it is. So I can just move around like uh, like crazy. Like it's it's almost like a shooter speed, but not quite enough for a shooter. So if I kill these enemies here, then I can collect this all. So is each like movement on here like an actual transaction on chain? Yes, you can see here uh, in the middle next to the grid, you can see the status of the transaction. So now if I move to the left, you can see the first when there, as long as there's the question mark, it's getting the block hash. Then um, uh, as long as the little rooster rotates, it's uh, sending it out. And as soon as the question mark is there, uh, it means it's, uh, it's done. The nice thing about this as well is that it's uh, using a WebSocket connection directly to the account of the board. So whenever the account changes, like when one of the players uh, changes the account, like if you would now play as well, then uh, I would immediately see the update as soon as the um, RPC gets a new state and pushes it to my client. 
Okay, so you're just tracking like everything via accounts, so that allows like multiplayer uh, gaming on this, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like just uh, multiple players changing the same account and subscribing to it via WebSocket. Oh, that's so. awesome! And there's so much things that could be built with this. So I I can't wait until other people uh, build more games like this. Um, can I share a few other games that I saw recently in the hackathon? Like uh, there were Go a bunch uh, that I was quite excited about. Like um, there's, for example, this rock, paper, scissor game, which uh, doesn't sound like much. But the uh, nice thing what they did is they kind of solved the hidden data problem of uh, data on chain, like by saving a hash to the client. And then as soon as uh, both people uh, say it's OK now, then they share their secrets and then you know who won. And then you can also get some tokens for that year, like you bet. And then afterwards you get the token, whoever wins. Cool. So that that kind of thing could be used for things like uh, like coin flips or loot boxes or thing like is that is that correct? That kind of for a, coin flip, for a coin flip, you don't really need it because you would send a transaction and then you have some random value and you send it back. But this is more like for um, for poker, for example. Like if everyone gets the hands dealed, then you of course don't want the other player to know what the hand of the other players is, they could theoretically look on chain since everything is on chain and then they could cheat. For a coin flip, it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, cool. Let's continue then. All right, then I, I found this other nice game. It's like uh, where you can send your player on uh, on missions and you get XP for it and you can like uh, fight snakes and hyenas. So it's also on chain and <laughs> it's completely uh, open source. So it's a very good resource just uh, to look at. Then there awesome. is... Uh, Dominari, it's a 8x8 grid where you have like multiple units that uh, run around and it's built with um, Rust to Wasm uh, compiled somehow. So that's um, quite interesting. So are each of these like, uh, is the whole grid like stored on chain for this one? I, yeah, it is. And uh, um, I think the units are NFTs. So I had a call okay. with them recently and I wanted to try it out, but it wasn't quite ready yet. But I'm going to uh, try it soon. So All right, cool. Then um, the Garvels Labs, who is also working on the Unity SDK, um, they made a location-based NFT uh, tree planting example. So that's really cool. Like I can, uh, I can plant a tree here, and then um, it will be here, and it will bounce a, a while, and other people can also see it. And it's quite interesting how they did it. You could um, should check it out in the Lampot DAO on their Twitter thread, how they did it. Okay. Then the next example I found uh, very exciting. It's like a community-driven multiplayer game where people vote on which moves to take next in a Game Boy game. And uh, what's also very interesting about it is that they have a kind of command pattern where um, the people vote for a while and then the data of this vote is saved in an account and the moves are saved. And this enables them to later replay the whole game. So later you can scroll through the whole game and pick the place that you like the most and then mint this uh, place as an NFT. So that was a very nice oh, that's idea. that's really cool. And a nice idea how you can solve this. This would also for this uh, real-time game probably be a good idea to have like a command pattern where you have like the different steps saved and then also animations will be much easier to, to solve here because currently it's just updating the state. So something you can do with that is like, hey, if you were playing a game of chess or something online, um, you could actually save specific moves even like as NFTs with using that same kind of pattern. Um, so like if there's like a specific move set that becomes famous, it becomes like an NFT and you can actually use it. And it's really that would be really cool, I think. Exactly. The Queen Gambit against uh, Jacob would be an epic NFT to have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another nice thing I found was uh, Kyle.Sol, he's building an uh, um, open source uh, SDK for saving uh, high scores uh, on chain. So every game could theoretically uh, create an account, create a season and then save their high scores there. So that's very composable. So I really uh, like the idea of, of doing that. And then the last one was just the Solana cookbook because it helped me a lot in learning how to build games on Solana. All right. That's awesome. Yeah, so like I and all of these are open source and you can like use them as examples to make other games, correct? Yes. 
Exactly. This one is in Unity. This one is um, also on chain. They, I think, they also all have uh, have their IDLs uh, downloadable. So it's very, very good. Awesome. So yeah, thank you uh, for coming today and teaching us about how you can do gaming on Solana and how you can build and use Solana to like interact with your games. It's been great. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, and uh, I'm excited to share more in the future. All right, so thank you for listening into this deep dive today on gaming. We will see you next time. Bye.